Hey friends, welcome back to the shop. Appreciate you guys tuning in to the CNC Auto Channel. I'm your friendly neighborhood mechanic. And today in the shop, we've got a 2014 Jeep Wrangler JK. It's got the 3.6 in it, Pentastar engine. And this Jeep has come in here with an overheating problem. But it's not just any overheating problem. It only overheats on the highway. Boy, that's a bit of a head scratcher. So we're going to go through a process of trying to figure out what is the least invasive thing that we can do one step at a time until we get to the problem. I thought this might be fun. So come along and let's see why this Jeep only overheats on the highway. Okay, 2014 Jeep JK. Uh, complaint is that it's overheating on the highway. So uh, I just started it up and we're going to go take it for a spin and see what it's doing. Come along. Here we are in our closed course and uh, I've had it running, I don't know, two, three minutes maybe at the most. Haven't even gotten halfway down the block out of the driveway and the temperature gauge says it's already at operating temperature. Now it arrived, I don't know, three hours ago, overheating. Um, well, no, it was actually, it was actually uh, right in the middle when it arrived. So um, it should have cooled down probably enough to take a little while to get up to operating temperature. So we're already seeing a, I don't know, let's call it anomalous activity on our temperature gauge. So I'm starting off with the heater off right now. Uh, just so that I can turn it on if it starts to go up uh, towards the hot end of the scale there and see if it makes any difference. That can help in the diagnosis. Now let's go for a spin here on our closed course and see what she does. So here we've driven down our closed course for, uh, I don't know, maybe another three or four minutes and it's already starting to creep up there. Look at that, three quarters of the way. So something's going on or to keep looking into this so we've taken her down the highway the closed course highway for a I don't know, four or five minute jaunt it's about 60 mile an hour and uh, the temperature gauge got up to about three quarters or so and um, I can hear the uh, electric fan just blowing away so uh, the electric fan came on and it has cooled it back down to uh, sort of normal range uh, as you can see, it's pretty chilly outside, 5 degrees Celsius for my friends across the pond. Uh, for those of us around here, that's, uh, I don't know, somewhere around 40 degrees or so. Again, the heater's still off, um, and I'm going to take it for another spin on the highway here and, uh, and see if it creeps back up and get her back to the house. Here we are cruising down the road, closed course at 55, 60 mile an hour, and that gauge comes up there around three quarters and then it kind of bumps down a little bit and then goes back up above three quarters a little bit and then it'll go back down a little bit. It really shouldn't be that erratic. Okay, so took it up a little faster and the faster I go, the higher that temperature gauge went too. All the way to the point where a little heat lamp came on. So I backed off a little bit. There's that overheating light again. Let's go ahead and back off a little bit. As we decelerate, it goes away. Only at high speed. I went ahead and turned on the uh, heater and uh, it really hasn't had any effect on that thermostat gauge. Okay, so coming back down to a stop at a, at a light and uh, the temperature has gone right back to the middle. So only acting up as, as, uh, as my friend said when they were at high speed on the highway. And sure enough, we were able to verify that. So the next step is to go back and let's diagnose what's going on with this thing. And I'm gonna show you the old school methods and then we're gonna see um, we're gonna use the computer a little bit as well 
So now we're back in the shop and we put the truck up on the air here and uh, the radiator, upper radiator hose here is warm but not scalding hot. And the lower radiator hose, which is down here, get you guys a view, is cold. So that's interesting. So the upper radiator hose is scalding hot. The lower radiator hose is cold. As you can see here, the, the reservoir for the uh, coolant overflow is full. Let's go see the coolant level in the radiator. So we've let it cool down for a little while so we can check the coolant level in the radiator. First thing you want to do is make sure that the system's not too pressurized. You ought to be able to squeeze these hoses really easily. Then you want to touch, feel the warmth of the system. This is cold to the touch. Now it should be safe to open up. And it is. Okay. All right. Let's take a look inside here. All right. Get you a view there. Um, it's not full, but it's not empty either. Let's put a little water in here. We're going to add water. So I thought it would be a good idea to sort of do a little bit of troubleshooting. Let's see if our overheating issue is due to air in the system, a bad thermostat, or a bad water pump. So let's start with the simplest things first. So I've got the truck up on some ramps here. What that does is it makes the nose just a little bit higher than the rest of the vehicle. And so this point right here, where we're going to be putting the water in uh, to the radiator, is going to be the highest point in the engine. So any bubbles that are trapped in the system eventually should go to that point. Okay, let's add a little water to the system here, at least until it's full. Oh, well, that didn't take much, did it? <laughs> okay, so... The system is full. I'm squeezing on the upper radiator hose, and you can see it's pulsating there. Very little air, at least trapped in the system as of right now. Um, so, unless there's an air bubble trapped somewhere else in the car, uh, this may not be our issue. But let's, uh, let's open the door and start it up and see what happens. Okay, so we've got the truck running. We just started it up. Looking to see if we see any bubbles coming out of there. Uh, let's see here. Okay, temperature gauge here says it's right in the middle. I'm feeling warm air coming out of the heater. Let me give it a little bit of gas here and let's see what happens. Of course, I can't see what's going on while I'm doing that. But it uh, looks like maybe there's a couple of bubbles here at the top. Uh, and I'm seeing I've got a little catch pan down below here uh, and I'm seeing that some of that looks to be sort of running over but uh, not to the not to the extent that I might expect if it were open system right now let's give it some more gas yeah. Okay, so that was sort of bouncing it around 2,500 to 3,000 RPM. I can see here by the drips that it looks like it was coming out a little bit. There's a couple of bubbles coming up. See that? So, you know, maybe there is a little bit of air trapped in this system. Maybe that's part of our issue. So, as you can see, still full. The uh, temperature gauge on the dash says that it's right in the middle. So we should have warm water circulating through here. Uh, the, the thermostat, if that was true, should be open, allowing water to circulate through the system. And I'm not seeing that right now. We're going to go ahead and let this thing uh, circulate if it's going to circulate. This water here is not hot. The, again, the temperature gauge on the dash says it's operating temperature right in the middle. If that were true, then the thermostat should be open and it should be allowing 
that hot coolant to circulate through our radiator and I should feel that hot that that coolant heated up here and this is just sort of lukewarm so so uh, some clues here uh, as to what may be going on so I wanted to show you guys I've got the computer hooked up to it and uh, as you can see the computer says that we're at operating temperature engine coolant temperature 213 degrees uh, engine oil temperature 188 intake air temperature 64 degrees and ambient temperature outside here inside the shop 42 degrees today um, so again with with the engine up to operating temperature this ought, this here ought to be really just you know boiling over i mean but this is just barely lukewarm i mean you could see it, the steam would be coming off of this if it were up to operating temperature so i don't think that we're getting good circulation for one reason or other. Now, is that reason because of the thermostat or is that reason because of the water pump? Well, let's, uh, let's see about that. So I just noticed that uh, a moment ago, this uh, thermostat must have opened up because all of a sudden, lots of coolant started boiling out of the top of here. And uh, now the electric fan has come on as well. And uh, so I put this funnel on here, allows us to fill this thing up above the height and probably be able to see it a little better. Let's see what's going on with the thermostat in here. Okay, so our gauge is still in the middle and I'm still feeling warm air blowing out of the vents as I was before. I'm gonna go ahead and rev it up a little bit. That's 2000 RPM, 2500 RPM. Let's try to keep it somewhere around there for a few seconds just to let the engine sort of circulate stuff around a little bit. Okay, let's go see what's going on with our pump. Oh, look at that. Okay, don't go over the top. Don't go over the top. Oh, so close. Oh, my goodness. Boy, that was a close one. Woo! <laughs> but look at that. So now we're starting to mix the coolant with that water that I had in there really can see that um, so things are circulating boy i made a bit of a mess underneath here the catch pan just wasn't quite big enough but that's all right okay just sort of as a test i wanted to show you guys uh, while i have that funnel up there i'm going to squeeze this upper radiator hose look at the see the fluid there just really gushing through so you know that we've got you know good flow from right here at the top of the radiator over to the funnel uh, look at it going up again come on now let's feel like that's a toilet you know and it's about to overflow i'm like please don't overflow don't overflow like you're at a guest house oh man here it comes again i'm wondering if there's like a air bubble in here somewhere oh it's so close to the edge please don't go over i'm gonna feel the lower radiator hose here guys and uh give it a squeeze okay look at that so i'm squeezing on the lower radiator hose Maybe there's a little bit of air coming out, but you can definitely tell that we're moving fluid again from the lower part of the radiator all the way up to the upper part of the radiator, at least through here. That doesn't mean that it's necessarily going through all the fins, but it, it does tell you that the, the radiator is not clogged uh, at the inlets uh, either, either, either side. Okay, let's see if this is getting warm. No, not yet. That's interesting. You know, I would kind of expect here we are at operating temperature to see that that was a little warmer okay look at this now things have just gotten a little bit crazy we're starting to see yeah now we're starting to warm up okay so our upper radiator hose I can feel gurgling coming through here like maybe there's some air trapped in there or something I definitely feel some gurgling here Interesting. The uh, electric fan is on. I've got water, warm water now coming through this upper radiator hose. At least boiling up through it. Now is it boiling and not getting moved by the 
water pump. Okay, our lower radiator hose is also sort of gurgling and slugging. I can't tell if there's air trapped in the system. Boy, listen to that electric fan going. Let's see what the thermostat inside says. Okay, it still says right in the middle. Let's see what our temperature on the computer says. Okay, temperature according to the computer is 226. So, no wonder why the, uh, the electric fan is going crazy. Engine oil temperature 212, so yeah, it's not lying to us, it's working. But it's just not cooling down, is it? So what I'm going to do, that gauge is right in the middle, just barely over the center. Rev it up just a little bit here. 2,000 RPM. Three thousand RPM. Boy, you hear that electric fan really creeping up there, and uh, looks like it' pretty warm. It should be burping out any air that's in that system. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the uh, car for now, and let's see if it drinks any of the coolant in that funnel. Okay. Car's turned off. You can really see the steam coming out of here now. So yeah, that water is going to be nice and warm. It is. I'm listening now that the thing is turned off and I can actually hear what sounds like boiling inside the radiator. Kind of interesting. What could that be, huh? Oh, actually the boiling is coming up through this upper radiator hose. That's where the boiling's coming from. I can feel it kind of kicking around over here a little bit. You know, I wonder if there's not air somehow trapped in this area that for some odd reason doesn't want to get up here to the radiator. I'll squeeze the hose a little bit. Look how it's drinking some of that coolant down. Maybe it will actually burp some of that air out now. Interesting. Go ahead and put some water in. Give it something else to drink. And continuing to drink. Filling up some nooks and crannies somewhere, isn't it? All right. You want some more to drink? I'll give you some. Oh, look at that. Goodness. Yeah. I'm going to have to get some more water or coolant. All right. Got some more water. And this thing was, this jug of water was full when I started. See if it still wants to drink anything. Okay. Give the upper radiator, radiator hose a squeeze or two. That'll purge some of the air out of it. Probably not all of the air, but that should help some. I'll go ahead and give the lower radiator hose a squeeze or two also. And see if that does anything. Yeah. Doesn't look like any air is coming with it, but... 
go. All right, let's start her up and see what happens. Okay, see a couple of bubbles still coming out of the system, so put a little water in there. You guys can see that a little better. So there is air trapped in this system. That could well be a big part of what's going on here, right guys? So we're going to try this simple thing first, right? We're going to, oh looky here, here we go again. It's like the toilet. You're at the guest house. It's coming up. You're like, no, please, God, no. Okay. Woo. Gosh, I thought it was going to overflow. Uh, oh, here it comes again. But, uh, you know, I'm going to I'm gonna try the simple thing first. We're going to fill this system up here just like we've done. Um, as you can see, it is circulating water, at least from here. And I saw a few bubbles come perping up. I still feel a little bit of gurgling in this hose over here, this upper radiator hose. So maybe that means there's still a few bubbles left in the system. Um, maybe whenever they filled this system last time, they trapped some air in there and didn't, uh, didn't use a little bleeder on top of the thermostat housing to, to release some of that air. Hard to say, but... Uh, we're going to give it a second here to sort of drink this, um, purge any air. I'm going to go turn it off again, and let's see if it takes another drink. See what this thermostat, or this gauge says. The gauge is right in the middle, and I've got warm air blowing out of the vents. Okay. Oh, the electric fan just kicked on, and look at that. It started to spit up on us. That's all right. You do your thing. As long as you're purging air out of the system, I don't care. All right. Any air? No? No real bubbles of air. I can feel a little bit of bubble down here. I can feel it kind of boiling up through that hose some. You can kind of hear it, too. I don't know. Let me see if I can get this microphone down here. I don't know if you can hear that. That is the water boiling up out of the thermostat housing and uh, into this upper radiator hose. Oh, look at that. Boy, it's really taking a drink now, isn't it? Okay. You go, girl. Drink it up. I'm going to keep this full so it doesn't burp any air or suck any air back into the system. Let's see. Is, is it done? Done drinking air? Drinking water? Filling her up? I'm interested to know now if we were to take it for a ride, would we experience the same thing where it tries to overheat when we're on the highway? That'll tell us something, I think. That'll tell us, you know, really the only thing we've done is try to burp air out of the system doing it this way. Now, the other way to burp air out of the system would be to evacuate the system of all the air and then refill it with coolant, which we will try if uh, this method doesn't seem to work. Okay, so we tried putting water in the system, burping the system the old-fashioned way, and uh, here we are taking on a test drive after that. And that temperature gauge is still creeping up there, so I'm not looking like we fixed anything, guys. Okay, so driving around after we tried to burp the air out of the system, we're still getting uh, some pretty warm temperatures. The coolant temperature now 233 while I'm driving it goes up to like 240 or so um, Temperature gauge a little bit over halfway and while you're driving it goes even uh, Above three quarters. Um, I did not get on the highway I'm pretty sure that if I did it would go all the way up to hot and turn on that heat uh, that overheat uh, lamp so 
the burping of the system the old-fashioned way by putting the car up on ramps and burping it with a, a big funnel uh, did not cure our issue so on to the next thing okay so I wasn't sold on the fact that this thing didn't have any air in the system so we're going to evacuate the system and refill it with coolant um, with the vacuum refilling kit here uh, you can get these things on Amazon really cheap. They come with all the different adapters for different types of vehicles. And uh, you can pressure test with this. You can also refill the system, making sure that you don't get any air in the system or you get all of the air out of the system. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and drained the Jeep of its coolant. And what we're going to do now is we're going to pull a vacuum on the system here. And this little manifold here, uh, let you do that. So I've got it hooked up to shop air here and then when I turn this valve on shop air is going to go through here and come out this end. When I open this valve the venturi effect is going to pull a suction or vacuum through this valve. This valve is open to in this case the radiator cap. Um, a lot of vehicles you'll, you'll put a, an adapter on your reservoir container if you don't have a radiator cap. But um, you can pull a vacuum on here and you wonder, okay, well, how much vacuum do I pull? So this gauge is in PSI here, or actually inches of mercury. But uh, the radiator cap or the lid on your, uh, your reservoir will tell you, this one says right here, 18 PSI. So we're going to go ahead and pull a vacuum up to 18 on our gauge here. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to let it sit there and see if it goes down for a while. That'll tell us if there's any leaks in the system before we put any coolant in there. So it's going to be loud here for a second, but uh, this is how it goes. Open up the air. Nothing's happening quite yet, but I'm going to open this valve and it'll start pulling a vacuum on the system. You just pull it until you... Now it's slugging a little bit of coolant still. That's all right. It's going to spray it out. All right, 15. I'm just sort of babying this valve here a little bit. Get it up to 18 or so. All right, that's probably good, huh? Okay, now I'll go ahead and turn off the air. You can hear my air compressor kicked on. But we'll just sit here and watch this and make sure that it holds vacuum for a little while. That'll tell us if there's any leaks in the system. So while I was at it, I thought I'd show you guys something cool about this vacuum system is when it pulls a vacuum on the system, it'll suck all the hoses closed. So see, this is flat as a pancake here, whereas normally it's, you know, a bigger round. Let's go down and look underneath and see if we can tell the lower radiator hoses sucked. Oh yeah, look at that. So this thing's the lower radiator hose here also flat as a pancake so that's how you know that it's working is it sucked all of the air out of the system here you can really see there the lower radiator hose is just skinny okay so now that we've got a vacuum on the system got this hose here hooked up and we're going to put it into a bucket of coolant this happens to be the bucket of coolant that just came out of it um, if you don't have the coolant that came out of it, you just put it into the coolant bottle. Make sure that the bottom of the hose stays in the bottom of the bucket or the, the coolant bottle. And then we're going to open this valve. And what's going to happen is there's a vacuum on this line now. When we open this valve, it's going to suck in on here. And you'll see the needle going towards zero. And it's drawing from the bucket here. You can see the pink coolant here. The needle has gone down. It's sucking all of this coolant in and filling up all the nooks and crannies inside of the engine. And all these hoses are going to go from flat to back to filled. This thing will keep drawing on the coolant until it gets to no vacuum. I can hear it kind of gurgling inside. I see the hoses starting to fill up. It's still drawing on the coolant here, even though it says zero on our gauge. We do have a vacuum still. Part of that vacuum is just the hoses going back open and drawing their own sort of suction. 
bucket is getting close to empty here. I'm keeping the bottom of this tube down in the bottom of the bucket so we don't draw any air. If you draw any air in this system, you can re-vacuum just a little bit and then draw more coolant in. But this thing is still drinking. Okay, I think it stopped drinking. All right, go ahead and close my valve here. Okay, now that we have let it draw all of the coolant that it wants to into the system, replacing that vacuum, we can go ahead and disconnect our hoses, disconnect this fluid line here, and let it drain back into the bucket. It's just coolant going back into the bucket. And then I, I'm going to put what's left in here into a container. All right. And we can disconnect this hose from our adapter that goes onto our radiator here. I'll show you what this adapter looks like real quick. There we go. See, it just makes a seal in the radiator and has a quick connect so that you can Put this hose on it and that allows it to suck vacuum through the radiator all right so if i look down inside of the radiator here it's not quite full so we can top this off a little bit sorry you guys couldn't see that all right so what i was saying is if i look down inside the radiator here i notice it's not quite full so we can top this off just a little bit more uh, manually but uh, at least using this system, we know that there are no air bubbles sort of stashed away somewhere in the nooks and crannies of the engine or the heater core or anything like that. Um, so this will be another way to test if air in the system is the reason why this Jeep overheats at highway speed. If that's not the problem, we know for sure that we've got the air out the best way possible. Um, the next thing to do is start looking at components like the thermostat or the water pump. Okay, so let's take this thing for a test drive now that we have uh, refilled the cooling system. We got uh, Bagel McGee over here. There he is. Hey, Bagel, you gonna go for a ride with us? You can help us check it out? All right, let's go see if it's still overheating. Okay, so once again, here we are, just, you know, two, three minutes down the road on our closed course, and, um, we already are up to operating temperature very similar to the last time that we took this thing out prior to the vacuum air bleed so no big changes yet let's see how it does at speed that's when it starts to overheat or did before let's see if uh, anything has changed well here we are a couple more minutes down the road and look at that it's already up to three quarters of the temperature gauge so Again, no change from before. It's not looking so good yet. Okay, well, there it is. Get up to highway speed, and sure enough, it overheats. So, no fix yet. It wasn't air in the system. At least we know that much. Well, Bagel, it didn't fix it, did it? No, I know. I just wanted to show you guys, or maybe you can hear it. There's a gurgling underneath the dash coming from the heater core. Um, and the uh, electric fan is on. Now, at uh, anything less than highway speed, it will cool down. But uh, you can hear some fluid moving under there. Just an interesting note. Okay, so next most invasive thing would be to change the thermostat on this thing. So that's what I've just done is I swapped out the thermostat that was in it for a new one. This, so here's the old thermostat, which really isn't old, um, but uh, we swapped it out for a new one. Let's make sure that that's not what's going on. And we're just burping the air out of the system. You can see the bubble coming up every now and then through here. Um, let it get up to operating temperature, see how she does. We'll go out there and we'll uh, we'll test it again. You see some air bubbles still coming up through the system here. And squeeze the hose here. Massage the hoses, right? All right, there we go. 
still burping a little bit of air out of it. Okay, okay, so here we are on our closed course again, going highway speed for the last five minutes. And look at that, rock steady in the middle. I've got my code scanner hooked up, and sure enough, just holding steady at about 200, 205 degrees. So I think it just had a bad thermostat. So if you guys are wondering what it was, looks to be fixed and all it took was a thermostat. Crazy. So here's the faulty thermostat. Let's just take a look at it and see if there's anything obvious about it. It's a motor rad. I'm not sure that that's going to be Mopar uh, approved, but it um, says it's uh, 203 degrees like the factory says it's supposed to be. See how weird that uh, that spring kind of looks a little off, doesn't it? But it seems to be seated right. But uh, anyway, uh, this one was no good, the one that was on it. And I tell you what, it doesn't look like it's only a week old either, does it, fellas? That plastic looks a little bit more faded than one week old, and supposedly the dealer replaced this one week ago. So be careful when verify you know what uh, somebody says that they've done because you never know it may uh, it may have been uh, just lip service anyway um, hope you guys enjoyed this hope you learned something I sure did and uh, now we know I didn't expect that one it's a, just a bad thermostat so again the symptom was that it overheated on the highway only and you know, we tried burping the system of air the old-fashioned way. Uh, we tried burping the system of air using a vacuum uh, refilling method. And, um, and then the next step up in that process, a uh, more invasive process, would be to replace the thermostat. Now, I didn't expect that. You know why? Because they had already taken this vehicle to a dealership. And I'll show you a receipt from the dealership that says that they had already replaced that thermostat. Goes to show you. So there we are. We just finished up our 2014 Jeep Wrangler. It was overheating, but only on the highway, which was kind of weird, you know? And so I decided, hey, this is a great time to go through a process of elimination. And so first step we did was we burped the air out of the system the old fashioned way, put the front end of the truck up in the air and ran it until all the air came out. That didn't cure the problem. So then we said, okay, well, Maybe we're still not getting all the air out, so I vacuumed the system down, refilled it with coolant. Now we know that there's no air in that system, and it's still overheating. That didn't cure the problem. Next step, and I'll admit it, I did not expect this to fix it, but the next step was, let's check out that thermostat. Let's replace that thermostat. The reason why I didn't expect that that was going to fix it is, as I showed you, just one week prior, the uh, local dealership had put a new thermostat in here and charge the customer for it. So uh, it just goes to show you, it's a, a lesson to all of us that, uh, you know, sometimes people <clears throat> get it wrong. Sometimes there's failed parts as well. Um, so the thermostat replacement fixed the problem. So there you go. Now you know, now I know that if you've got one of these Chrysler 3.6s, which real common engine that overheats on you, but only on the highway, it could be a stuck thermostat, okay, stuck closed. Now, what's interesting also is that the, the car th never threw a code, never had a check engine light for this. But if the thermostat is stuck open a little bit, that car will set off that thermostat or that check engine light for a thermostat um, uh, irrationality code. So really kind of interesting that the computer can tell when it is not working one way, but not the other. But now you and I know what are the symptoms of a stuck closed thermostat. So we learned something today. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Man, I sure appreciate y'all tuning in. Like and subscribe if you appreciate our content and check out these other videos for more really good tips and tricks on this car and many others. Y'all have a wonderful day and God bless.